<clears throat> okay, so I'm um, going to do some yin yoga for head and neck stuff. And here's what you need. So I really like the actual yoga block. I think an actual yoga block is really good. It's really light, it's sturdy, it's gonna hold your whole weight. If you don't have one, um, like a uh, like a sturdy box, something that's gonna hold your weight, for real. Because in order to do yin, we need to be sort of comfortable, and we're gonna use this thing kind of a lot. The second is, this is a blanket, it's not really, it's a cushion, but like something about this size that you can tuck up under your butt. I'm gonna show you in a sec, all right? So let's just get right in. We're going to do three yin poses of four minutes each. So the first one is Paschimottanasana, forward bend. Just go to your forward bend and I'm going to talk about it as we go, okay? Starting a timer. So forward bend is about hamstrings. It really is. It's about the backs of your legs. For super flexible people, they can just get right down in here and they're like fine in their low back and stuff. But for most of us, we need to really pay attention to our hamstrings here. So that's what this thing is for. You don't always have to use this in Paschimottanasana, but if you're gonna be there for four minutes, I would say use it. So I'm getting up on it. A blanket is fine, a towel is fine, whatever. I'm putting my hip bones on it, and I'm like, just wiggling forward. And you can feel when you do that, the connection between the hamstrings and the low back. I can feel it. Just find that place. And that's it. That's it, that's it. So find a place where you're comfortable, that's important. And then this thing, I had a revelation recently about blocks in yin yoga because I found that if I can get to a place in a pose like this where I can rest my head, which by the way, I'm not right now because my, my muscles are really cold. But if I, if I came to like here, for example, letting go of the weight of my head feels great. So. If you're less flexible than me and you need to make a stack of something, like a block, I don't have anything else, but a block and like a something else on top of it in order to put your head on and do that. If you're really flexible, maybe you can come down low or you may wanna put this thing on the outside of your feet. That's gonna get you deep in there, but be honest with yourself. We're gonna be here for a long time. All right, that was a lot of talking. Now just be there. Where you're gonna wanna feel it, as I said, is the backs of your legs. Find that first. There are people who are flexible enough that they're gonna to start to do their work in here, in their low back. But for us, normal people, this is really about legs. And the reason why I'm saying that this is for headaches or for congestion or for head and neck stuff is because I have those problems. I get a lot of headaches, I have a lot of head and neck stuff, and um, this works for me. So this guy is so annoying. I hope that he is adding to your experience. It's not necessarily adding to mine. Sorry about him. Anyway, headaches, congestion, head and neck stuff, these are the poses that I like. This works for me, hopefully this will work for you too. But that said, if it's not working or if you are in more pain, if this is making it worse, stop and go to bed, okay? Sometimes headaches are just like that. Don't make it worse.
okay, there's our timer. That was Pashimottanasana. Loosening up the low back. Starting to move stuff around in the head. Let's go to pose number two. We're gonna do a supportive Matsyandrasana push pose. This one I get into sort of awkwardly. You're gonna need this thing again. Or whatever you're using as a block, but it should hold your weight. I'm gonna put it behind my upper back. I want it to hit about behind my rib cage. And then I'm gonna come down and be like this. All right. And then I'm gonna adjust it because it's not exactly in the right place. Find yours. Oh, I'm resetting our timer. What we're doing here is opening the heart, getting fluid out of the chest and out of the lungs. We're draining the sinuses, moving blood flow backwards. Fish pose, Matsyandrasana, is tough on people who have head and neck issues. I should have mentioned that already. If you've got a head and neck or neck issue, go put a cushion under your head or something. Make this angle a little, um, a little less intense. Make sure you feel okay. Don't ever throw out any part of your body because of something that a yoga teacher said. Be gentle with yourself. If you have head tension or headaches or something like that, chances are pretty good that you're sensitive in this area. Be gentle, really gentle. If you have pets in your house, you maybe notice that they love yoga. They kind of ignore me most of the time, except when I'm doing yoga. They're like, oh, right here. In addition to draining up here and really giving you a nice stretch through your fifth chakra, your throat, and your fourth chakra, your heart, we're doing a lot of work with um, lymph nodes up in here. There's a lot of um, really deep active sp spaces in here that we're stretching out in a passive way along here too. If you have a buildup of stuff in your throat, you can kind of feel it here. As I said, it's your fifth chakra. All right, we're coming gracefully off of this thing. I'm coming to the side, turning off my timer. And we're gonna go to our last one, which is Uttanasana forward bend. 
So basically, I'm just gonna start and we'll talk as we go, okay? So forward bend is forward bend. It's a lot like the first pose we did, Paschimottanasana. Um, all we did was take that pose and turn it 90 degrees. But that said, it's totally different because our relationship to gravity is different here. The ways in which it's similar to the forward bend we already did are that it's about this part of your body, your hamstrings, really. Feel the connection between your hamstrings and your low back. And if you wanna come a little bit into flat back, flat back is one of my favorite poses. This is where we really feel this deep connection here and here. And then you're coming down. If you wanna take your block and lean on it, mm, it's nice. I think it's nice. Maybe you wanna lean on your block up here, or I don't know, it doesn't matter. So the thing that this pose, Uttanasana, accomplishes, that Paschimottanasana, our first pose, didn't, is that we're upside down. Right? It's huge. Reversing the flow of blood back to the head. Releasing your head, releasing your shoulders, releasing your neck. In this and all standing poses, we're feeling our feet. We're really connecting our feet to the ground. We're not pushing through anything here. We're just hanging. We're literally hanging. We're just hanging. We're waiting for whatever is going to happen to happen. And breathing. Out of the three yin poses that we've done, for me, this one's the most intense. This is the one that's like really, really moving the blood back down into the head, really clearing the sinuses, really changing things in the body. They all do, but this one's a big one for me. You will almost certainly notice this already, but yin yoga is about change. It's about finding your edge, wherever your edge is in these various muscle groups that we're working through, and paying attention to it until the edge moves, which it will. Stay focused inside your body. Good job. So what I like to do when I'm coming out of this is take this block and put it between my knees and be in a chair pose for just, I don't know, not very long. A couple of breaths, a few breaths. If you have a headache, you don't have to do this. We're just trying to get some blood black back in here because we literally stretched for all of that. All right, come on up. Okay, so we did three poses, three yin poses that we're targeting up here, I think. For me, they were six chakra stuff, moving stuff out of the head and the neck. Um, I hope it worked. I hope you don't have a headache and I hope um, that my dog and cat didn't drive you totally insane as they kind of did me. Namaste.